Hello and a warm welcome back to the channel of motorcycle nonsense and flip-flops. This is the all-new Ducati Scrambler, a bike that replaces Ducati's sellingest bike ever. It replaces the previous Scrambler, which found its way into more homes than Silvio Berlusconi on a night out. So I want to find out if this is a good bike for first-time big bike riders, and if you can have fun on it, if you're a little bit more advanced, and just see what changes have been made and why, and if you can feel them in the seat of your pants, and if it makes you want to spray Pomodoro sauce everywhere. Should we just go on with it? This bike is, according to Ducati, 70% new. It now costs from £9,995 for this entry-level Icon version. There's also the full throttle version, which gets the term you only can, and a quick shifter, and uh, the nighty bluey one, which I'll stick pictures up of here, which all cost a little bit more. Now, the big changes to this bike really aesthetically are it's now got full LED lights. So it's got LED daytime running lights, I can almost say that, and full LED low beam, main beam, and, Indicators. Ducati used to be a bit stingy with their indicators, but it's now got full LED indicators as standard. Now, obviously, there are tons and tons of options for this bike because it's designed to be super customizable for funky young people like me 20 years ago. So there's a load of different mirror choices, bar end mirrors and things like that. The main colors are black, red, and yellow, but there are another six colors that you can change by changing some of these plastic panels here. So in total, I think there's six or nine colors. There's a whole range of colors and they all look fantastic. Now, is it a little bit lighter as well? It's got some tweaks, like it's now got a bolt-on rear subframe rather than a welded on one. I don't know if that's done to save weight or just to make it a bit cheaper, but I don't know. There've been some changes in the engine department. It's still 803 cc V-twin, still 73 horsepower, 65 newton meters of torque, but because it's now Euro 5 compliant, that torque and power higher up in the rev range to be honest i've not really noticed that it's two and a half kilos lighter the engine as well because it's got a smaller clutch still got the same forks as before still got 330 mil single-sided front brake as well so it's not got a disc on each side for monstrous stopping power but it does the job just fine the seat height is 795 millimeters i think that's about 31 inches so it's very approachable and there's a lower and a higher seat height i'm six foot three so i'm quite a lanky bastard and i look like this on it which is possibly a bit silly i feel fine on it but yeah if you are a short ass you're probably going to be fine on this bike i mean it's designed for italian people who are racing jockeys so you'll be fine car coming that engine sips from a 13 and a half litre fuel tank that should be good for about 160 miles of scrambling fun. And there is a 47 horsepower A2 compliant version, which is for people in the UK with smaller driving licenses. It's only when you get to a certain age, you can get a big A3 sized one. That's not true, that's nonsense. The shock has moved slightly inboard, so it used to be on the outside, it's now on the inside. And it's uh, 4.7 kilos lighter overall. But yeah, let me show you a few other bits and then we'll take it for a good old fashioned rogering. Who's Roger? Now, excuse the shaky cam footage, we've added a reflecto porn. I just want to show you the electronics on this bike because the big news, hello, is that it's got some. But look, this screen takes a little while to boot up. It's animating, it's animating, and we're in. It's got a 4.3 inch color TFT, which is a big step up from what we had before. You've got two rider modes, raw, road, road, road and sport. Road and sport, which I'll talk about in the riding bit. You've got cornering ABS and standard traction control. And yeah, ride by wire throttle now. Looks much the same as a normal throttle, but it's more electronic-y. And the switch gear is very familiar if you've ridden any of Ducati's like 950 engine bikes before. Yeah, that's about it. We are now going to go for a ride. Oh yes, there's a phone connection. It's 250 pounds. There's also a 250 pound quick shift option, which is standard on the full throttle version. <laughs> Let's go full throttle down there. Brum. Right, we're going for a ride on the Ducati Scrambler Icon on some British B roads to start with to see what it feels like when you give it a little bit of stick. Now, I don't have the quick shifter because this hasn't got it, it's an optional extra. But yeah, the 803cc air cooled engine's got plenty of get up and go. It's a really nice, torquey thing. It's not going to intimidate you, it's not going to pull your face off, and it's a very predictable spread of power, and it just makes a really great noise. Ducati's done a good job of getting it homologated for Euro 5. And yeah, it's just a wonderful thing. Now, as you might be able to tell already, it can certainly corner very nicely indeed. It's got a nice, predictable turn in these tyres that it's on. They don't tip you in suddenly. There's no feeling like you're going to fall off the edge of a cliff. It's just a very predictable roll from side to side. And it's not darty. And 
if this is going to be your first big bike or even not your first big bike there's just something quite nice about that it doesn't feel too sporty which which is a thing but it does also give you loads of confidence and you get a lot of feeling through the seat and through the bars as to what the bike is doing now one thing you can probably tell from the audio being dreadful is there's no wind protection there's no screen fitted on this bike so you're just going to have to lump it or get an aftermarket screen i think ducati might have one on the options list but this thing it's really impressive the scrambler when it first came out was an affordable bike and it was built down to that budget now it still is that but it's a bit pricier because of you know wars invasions cost of living the cosy lives crisis etc etc so the suspension doesn't have a super premium feel and you can feel that in corners you haven't got the same support that you would have on a more expensive bike but trust me if i'm going down this british road at 60 miles an hour it's bumpy i'm not being kicked out of the seat it's a bit boingy on the brakes but you've got the confidence to chuck it in i just don't think you need anything fancier in terms of suspension on this bike it does the job really well i am quite heavy i am 15 stone ish which is about 100 kilos and it's working for me it's not one of those bikes that is set up for uh ducati's athletic 50 kilo test riders it's all right you can't bounce up and <laughs> you can't bounce up and down and it feels like it wants to go off road but i probably won't be doing that today around town this engine is it's actually really good often v twins like this have a real lumpy feeling and you want to be in first or second gear around town but i'm in third gear 24 miles now and it does pull really quite cleanly can i try that in fourth gear yeah it's a bit lumpier but it's not awful you can sit in the 30 limit in fourth gear and it's not rattling you around like you're on a broken washing machine it is absolutely fine but look oh no there's a national speed limit see how fast it is full throttle in sport mode that's 30 to 60 done clutch this up shifts really easy there's a traxxas so that's slow down a bit having to get to the use still of that there's no quick shift or blipper on this i would always recommend that because it just makes life a little bit more fun to be honest i think it's a 250 quid optional extra on this bike the mirrors are pretty decent as well i've not had any vibes and i've been doing 80 sorry 70 70 yeah on the motorway and the mirrors have stayed resolutely clear which is quite a big deal if you're just starting out for confidence they're quite big mirrors as well so you get a really decent view of uh, what you've annoyed behind you <laughs> this is good this is good this has a character about it that not many other bikes in this category of parallel twin engines have although parallel twin engines companies like yamaha are kind of putting funky cranks in them to give them some character this being a v-twin it just feels like it's got way more natural character and it's got pops and burbles on the overrun which frankly i thought we would have seen the last of those with euro 5 but Ducati has somehow managed it now i'm six foot three i do fit on it really well the tank feels narrow between your knees it's not splaying your legs like you are in stirrups giving birth to twins it's absolutely fine i don't feel too cramped on it either and um, which is often the case if you're a tall lady or gentleman and the pegs just fall exactly where you want them to be it's what they call the rider triangle the bit between the handlebars the seat and the feet feels really natural doesn't feel uncomfortable there's a lot to like about this you could say that this bike is gonna be a bit of an underwhelming ducati because it's one of the least powerful but still nearly 80 horsepower on a naked bike like this with this much low down grunt it feels plenty fast enough and it's one of those bikes you could probably keep up with your mates on and just learn to take corners more quickly because you know you're not going to be keeping up necessarily on the straights but yeah oh, it's got real charm about it it's got real charm one thing i do want to test in a minute however are the front brakes it's only got a single sided disc albeit a large 330 millimeter one and usually with one sided discs you get a bit less braking power more modern bikes usually have a disc on each side obviously so i will yammer it into a corner and uh, heave on the anchors and see what she does once i'm out of this 30 limit oh yeah this is a real feel good machine i kind of feel like ducati when they launched the scrambler brand whatever it was eight years ago now they did it with like hipster barbershops and beard artists and that kind of stuff 
uh, to appeal to a younger target audience, which is fine. Like we need to appeal to younger people to get more young people into biking, definitely. But you know, not every young person is swayed by that marketing. What they should have just said is, this bike is really good at making you feel good. The engine character and everything else, and it still has that. I would say it's not really giving me night and day differences between the old one and this. It does feel perhaps a little bit lighter. Um, and the dash is a big upgrade having that colour dash. And it's got a range readout. Uh, so it's saying I've got 160 miles to a slightly less than full tank. Or you can see bars so you can see what percentage of a tank you have remaining. It's very customisable. And that's always the same dash that I had on a £24,000 Ducati Diablo V4 that I rode earlier. But anyway, let's whale on it a bit. <laughs> no quick shifter, but I quite like that clutch just up shifts remind me of a time when I was learning to ride and do them. Yes. <laughs> brakes, the brakes are okay. They've got good initial bite and then it's only when you're really leaning on them to slow yourself down that they, uh, you sense they haven't got as much power as a twin disc setup. But they are perfectly good. The back brake around town is also quite strong, quite easy to modulate. And in the olden days, Ducati rear brakes would sometimes be about as useful as a colander for a condom. But it just wouldn't slow you down. Sometimes just wouldn't work at all because they put the master cylinder for the rear brake. Next to the exhaust on their big V-twins that would cook the brake fluid and then you would have no rear brake, which for racers isn't a problem. You don't really use the rear brake, but if you're commuting, as you would on this, a rear brake is a very useful thing to have. And this has one and it works well. There we go. So when I was saying earlier, the suspension does feel a little bit basic and built down to price, which of course it is. It's not got Erlens or anything crazy like that. That would make this a 16 grand bike. You can feel, you can feel most bumps in the road, but it's not in a way that's going to intrude on your buttocks. It's not going to annoy you over a long distance. And uh, at the same time, when you brake, the front is reasonably soft. So basically, don't take this bike racing. No one's taking this bike racing, it's a road bike, but it is a damn good one. I think the suspension compromise is pretty much spot on. Yeah, and the tyres, although they look slightly off-roady, they're not really going to get you very far off-road. And to be honest, on-road, they feel really good as well. Let's do some more braking. Oh yeah, quite a bit of dive, but it's all good. I like a bit of dive when you brake. It tells you how much grip you've got at the front end and just gives you a little bit more confidence. Oh, hello Skoda Superb. Oh, Skoda Yeti as well. If you're a Skoda fetishist like I am, then oh, I've actually got a Skoda Yeti coming for my car channel. They've not made it for about nine years, but Skoda has got one on their Heritage Press fleet for people to borrow. It's the one they landed a helicopter on the roof of. So if you like Skoda Yetis, check out Tim Rody Drive Stuff because I've got a review of a really old SUV coming on it. That's exciting, isn't it? I bet there's no crossover between Yeti drivers and Ducati Scrambler owners. Right, I switched to road mode now on the on the riding mode select. So you've got road and sport and uh, it just kind of changes the feel of the throttle because it's a ride-by-wire throttle so yeah as well as having traction control now it's got proper throttle maps and different riding modes and yeah that's a lot softer in road mode it feels like it takes it a little while longer to wake up and come alive and if you want to change it back you just hold the indicator switch in and then go up to sport mode close the throttle it says power high Ducati traction control 2 and once I'm in the correct gear, it will feel punchier than it does. It doesn't change suspension or anything like that. But yeah, that's a cool thing. Whee! And I've got a gear indicator as well, which is very, very helpful, especially if this is your first big bike. So has Ducati cocked up monumentally with the reinvention of the Scrambler for 2023? No, not at all. It's still a very characterful bike and I can still really recommend it as your first big bike or even if you just want a second bike to potter around some muddy roads on. I wouldn't say green lanes because you probably need to change the tyres and get one with a bigger front wheel. But it's still a very charming thing. It's a very compelling package. Personally, I would want the full throttle one with the quick shifter and with the slightly, slightly rotier exhaust it's still road legal so it's not ridiculous i think it's a lovely looking thing now it's not really my cup of tea but personally if i was going to recommend you a good first bike this would definitely be on the list but for this price now ten thousand pounds you can get the new triumph street triple r and that is way faster than this i think it feels just about as nicely built and it'll probably keep you entertained for a bit longer but 
there's a certain charm to this if you like some pottering, if you like the idea of going down a country lane, maybe with an open face lid on, some trendy leathers and, you know, some World War II planes flying over your head and that kind of frame of mind. It's a really good bike, yet it can still go around corners properly. It still brakes reasonably well for a bike one front disc and it is punchy out of corners. It's not laugh out loud entertaining, but it's a solid bike. It's kind of probably what you imagined it was. Ducati hasn't cocked you up. They're gonna sell hundreds of thousands of these. It'll probably be around another eight years, and it's a good thing. Now that one went on way too long. I'm sorry about that. If you have enjoyed this, please hit like and do subscribe to the channel. It's got plenty more bike reviews and vlogs and things coming up very soon. Go down to the comments, leave me the Italian word for Berlusconi sausage. I'm about to blow away and I've got to go and collect a Multistrada V4 to take home because I'm a lucky boy and I'll see you soon. They're not paying me in Multistrada V4s, they're not paying me at all. I'm being nasty about some bits of this bike.